Good morning, everyone. Today I want to talk about a remarkable woman from the Bible, Deborah. Even though she lived thousands of years ago, Deborah's story contains many lessons that are still relevant for us today. Deborah was a prophet, judge, and military leader during a turbulent time in Israel's history. She was the only female judge mentioned in the Bible and was clearly an exceptional woman. However, most of us probably don't know a whole lot about her beyond the basic facts told in Judges chapters 4 and 5. So today, I want to share some interesting details and insights into Deborah's life that really bring her story to life. Things that don't get preached about too often, but give us a deeper appreciation for this bold, wise woman of faith. To start with, while Deborah was judging and leading Israel, the nation was being oppressed by King Jabin of Canaan and his military commander, Sisera. They had a massive army with 900 iron chariots, basically the tanks of the ancient world. Israel was powerless against them and had been brutally oppressed for 20 years. In this desperate situation, Deborah summoned a military leader named Barak and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go! Take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Now this was no small task, she was asking Barak. But Deborah had heard from God and was calling Barak to step out in courage and faith. Here's something interesting. Barak essentially says to Deborah, I'll go if you go with me. Many speculate that Barak wanted Deborah present because her prophecy assured success from the Lord, but he didn't have the confidence himself to face Sisera's terrifying iron chariots without Deborah. This would be like a four-star general today saying to a pastor, I'll attack the enemy if you come with me. Deborah agrees but tells Barak, the honor of defeating Sisera will now go to a woman, not you. After gathering 10,000 men, Deborah goes with Barak to wage battle. Now get this, something happens that Sisera's mighty army could never have predicted. The Lord intervenes and causes it to rain heavily, flooding the Kishon River. As Sisera's iron chariots get bogged down in the mud, Barak's infantry has the advantage and wipes them out. It's an incredible miracle that thwarts the weaponry of the day. Sisera flees the battle on foot and comes to the tent of a woman named Jael. She invites Sisera in, giving him a false sense of safety. But when he falls asleep, she drives a tent peg through his skull with a hammer. Gruesome. After this stunning victory, Deborah and Barak sing a song of praise found in Judges 5. Scholars say it's one of the most ancient texts in the Bible. And it's very interesting that in the song, Deborah is listed before Barak, showing she was likely the more crucial leader. A woman leading men into victorious battle was remarkable for that time. Now, during the battle, we're told the stars fought from heaven. This may refer to a miraculous meteor shower falling on Sisera's army, but stars were also associated with false gods back then. So it may symbolize God showing his supremacy over pagan deities believed to control stars. Here are some other fascinating insights on Deborah. She would sit under a palm tree between Rama and Bethel to judge and lead Israel. People would come to her for wisdom and counsel from God. She was serving as a one-woman supreme court for the nation. But while Deborah was a great leader, the Bible is clear that all of Israel at the time was living in disobedience to God. Idol worship was rampant. God raised Deborah up as an unusually bold and faithful leader in a predominantly ungodly culture. In male-centered ancient Near East societies, women were often viewed as inferior but God anoints Deborah as a prophet and judge over his people. This shows God can use anyone for his purposes, including women. He looks at the heart, not external characteristics. Deborah was likely more of an outlier than a pioneer for women. After her, Israel goes right back to male judges and kings. Her story was special for that unique time and context but she remains an inspiration for anyone doubting that God can powerfully use them. While Deborah exhibits strength and leadership, 
she also displays nurturing qualities. Her name means B, and she refers to herself as a mother in Israel. She guided God's people with a balance of boldness and compassion. Let's take a minute to recap some of the key messages we can take from Deborah's story. God gifts both men and women and calls them to lead and make courageous stands for Him. Our gender, age, background don't limit how God can use us. With God, nothing is impossible. He can give supernatural victory against any odds or threatening forces that come against us. At times, God calls us to step out in faith even when afraid. He often uses the fearful and unequipped, so He gets the glory when they succeed. God looks for people like Deborah who are willing to follow His voice, even when it's difficult or unpopular. Their obedience can inspire and impact many others. Relying on human strength, weapons or defenses will always fail. Our only hope is turning to God in humility and prayer. God is supreme over any false gods or spiritual powers. All creation serves at His command. At crucial moments, God may intervene miraculously but most often he works through ordinary people who obey and trust in him. Friends, I hope looking at Deborah's life motivates all of us to draw closer to God and step out in faith when he calls us. No matter our nationality, age or gender, God can work powerfully through those who humbly surrender themselves to him. Deborah was an ordinary woman who followed God's voice and did the extraordinary. She answered God's call and gave him the glory at every step, not relying on her own strength. And God used her mightily to rescue his people during a desperate time. May we have the courage to say yes to God like Deborah did, to let him work through us, to believe firmly that our faithful mighty God can bring miraculous victory and breakthrough whenever he calls us to move forward in his name. Like Deborah, let's choose to live with bold, fierce faith in the one true living God. The God who reigns supreme over every earthly power and need we face. The God who will fight for us if we put our trust in Him. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the inspiring example of Deborah's courageous faith and bold leadership. Help us learn from her life. Give us eyes to see when you are calling us to step out and use our gifts for your glory. Fill us with trust in you so that we can stand strong against any opposition or challenge that comes our way. We know that you are the mighty God who is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. Give us a heart willing to be used by you in extraordinary ways, just as you used Deborah so long ago. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.